Well, bit of litany. Brothers and sisters, my name is Adarius, and welcome to the view of Samurai Jack. So Samurai Jack, and before I get to the review, I will give you some backstory. And if you don't care about that or just want to get to the review of things, this is the time you need to go to, and there will also be a link in the description down below. But first, some backstory. Now, why is this such a big deal? Getting a fifth season of Samurai Jack. Well, first of all, the show aired back in 2001, and the premise of it, it was just so fascinating and epic. And what you have is you have this samurai um, who is nameless, but is given a name, Jack, by some strangers. He needs to fight this evil entity called Aku. Um, Jack Aku. <laughs> yes. Now he has some faces on, that's easier to follow along. But... Aku is the incarnation of all evil and darkness and just... And nothing can harm him. No weapon, nothing. Except for a specific samurai sword or katana. Which luckily is the possession of Jack. Now Jack tries to kill Aku. But before he can finish the final blow. Aku sends him into the future where he has regained his strength, has taken over the world, and all, everything is formed in his image. And now Jack needs to try and find a way to get back, because if, even if he kills Aku in the future, there's still a lot of shittiness that had happened in that span of time. And that's basically the show, actually. Now what I love about it is that the director and creator, Genji Tartakowski, Pretty sure I put you the name, I'm sorry. Is he created this world that's relied more on visual storytelling than just explaining shit to you. So he would often use minutes upon minutes of footage with Jack either just walking in a place or doing something silently with no voice or explanation coming from him. And the, it is up to the viewer to fill in the blanks and get an understanding of what is going on and it just works extremely well. Some might say it will get a bit boring at times but I don't think so. It's it's part of the style and it just know when to start explaining something. It stretches it to the absolute maximum what what the viewer can take in before they go okay this is getting a bit boring and then they start adding in some characters or a foe or a threat or anything. It could be anything and it could be nothing. It grabs you. And not only that, the visual style, they, they kept it pretty simple. It's just really flat animation. That doesn't mean that it doesn't look great. Far from it. The environments and the characters are extremely innovative and fun to look at and the accident sequences and the animation in there is extremely just just powerful but fluent and effective and the backgrounds well the backgrounds the thing is the show's premise made it possible for Jack to at one time be in a cyberpunk western world the other time being in some ancient stone man caveman village and then again being in a super real uh, not realistic but futuristic environment and and another time he was fighting some kaiju battles with a big mech samurai and that makes every episode interesting because you don't know what you're gonna get and you might go but does that really make sense but in some way they make it work the problem with the first four seasons would be that it is extremely episodic. It will be Jack has something he needs to do. He tries and do it. Something will get in his way or he will manage to do it. But it won't get him any closer to the end goal. Which is killing a coup. Now the good thing about it is that you can tune in at any time you want. Find an episode. Watch it. And it would all make sense. Because there's no prior 
information you need to know even the information i gave in the start of this review of what the show is about the opening sequence of every episode is that is a cool telling what's happened who he is what's who Shamar jack is they fought and then he threw him into the future so you know everything you need to know when you start watching the episode that is great but you kind of missed some overall storytelling that's you know just presented itself to pointing towards the end goal and we didn't quite get it the sad thing is that even though this show was extremely awesome on the fourth season in 2004 it got cancelled and jack hadn't yet returned back to the past not future <laughs> that's another movie but to the past that sucks man that's that really really sucks I, I won't say it's firefly over again because firefly is you have something that has a lot of potential and you just wonder what it could be whereas samurai jack you know what it is you just kind of wish that you had the end it's like you have a book of 400 pages and you were able to read 350 of them you just missed the final 50 pages i don't know if that makes sense but but yeah now once that was said and done the fans did cry out for an ending but we kind of knew that that wasn't going to happen shows that getting cancelled usually don't get back on unless it's futurama or family guy i guess so what happened well over a decade happened actually but adult swim picked up the series almost the whole old team got back together to create one final season of only 10 episodes to air on Adult Swim with the main focus on finishing Jack's story. Now, before we get into that, there is a little elephant in the room we have to address. We can't get around it. Now, the voice of Aku for the first four seasons was the legendary Marco Iwamatsu. And uh, unfortunately, between the end of the fourth season and the beginning of the fifth season he passed away and he has such an iconic voice you can easily recognize it it's hard to explain but the timing and the com uh, comedy and delivering of his lines was just pitch perfect each time every time aku was on screen you were pretty sure to laugh your ass off now that they're going to make this fifth season where jack needs to finish his journey it's kind of hard to bring back a coup because you know the voice actor died but they actually found an imitator greg baldwin i believe it is called who does and as a perfect job as an imitator could have done you do know that it is a different actor but for what he did man <claps> bravo i mean that that was almost nailing it but yeah they they make this final season and it's gonna be 10 episodes long and they say it's gonna be one cohesive story it's not gonna be as episodic as the former and the fact that they are now airing it on adult swim means they can make it a bit more mature that doesn't mean they're gonna make a lot of blood and violence but they're gonna use the blood and violence in specific places throughout the season so it has an impact and meaning for the story the reason for that is that in the old series the first four uh, seasons it aired on Cartoon network and you can have a guy with a sword just slicing up enemies left and right because for some reason americans and not americans that generalizing a bit too much but the ones who run the tv stations over there just think that if you sh draw a cartoon and you end up making them kill each other kids are apparently gonna get scarred however they still watch dragon ball and there people get their arm and heads and legs blown off but i don't know but anyway the way they he they worked around the fact that they couldn't kill and use the sword to slice up enemies was them always made them robotic when jack caught someone down clean in half it was a robot or a cyborg or it spewed green blood and bear and apparently that doesn't mean it's gory no i can't make that make sense no not really. it doesn't it doesn't make sense but anyway so you're probably asking yourself fine fine but why do i care well 
they actually implemented that fact into the story of the fifth season. Since Jack, throughout his journey in the first fourth seasons, only have fought and killed monsters and robots, when he actually managed, or not managed, accidentally kills a human being for the first time on the show, it would also be the first time for him. And he then asks approximately what do you think a human would act when they first time kill another human being. That's what I mean about using the violence in reserved passages of the seasons. I think I'm gonna get to the review now of, of the actual fifth season. I have rambling all off, sorry. So, season five. We found out that Jack has spent the last 50 years trying to beat Aku, unable to do so. Aku has managed to destroy all the time portals so Jack can't get back. Jack has lost his sword, so he can't kill Aku. So the only thing he can do is driving around and save other people from Aku's minions and henchmen and so forth. And it's taking a pretty big toll on him. And you might go, but if it's 50 years later, he will be in his 70s or 80s. Yeah, technically he is, but traveling through the time portal Aku made somehow made him immune to time. Time doesn't have an effect on him anymore. That's a pretty depressing state to be in, if you think about it. He can't get back to his family. He can't defeat a coup. And he's just stuck in this hellhole forever, managing to do absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter how many foes he kill or how many towns he save. A coup is still in power and he can just keep on doing his many thing ways. And I actually kind of liked the different tone in this season. You really get a feeling that this is more mature and it's not so you can't make your kids watch it. The blood there is, of mad violence there is, kind of adulty, but it's not that someone is gonna get sliced open and the gore fill, fill out. People die, but not that horrific. I think that's the best I can say it without spoiling anything. I think one of the reasons they did the tone shift, not only because, you know, they can air it on Adult Swim and they have more freedom now, is also the ones who watched the show 15 years ago has grown up and wants to see it to the end. And in that time when they have grown up, they now expect more from this show, even though it's pretty much more you can get out of it. But funny thing, they managed to pull more from the show. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just fucking great. The other thing that, that is funny is that from the time they made the first four seasons to now, the industry have went from paper to computer. That means you can get more clean animation and images and it's not that scruffy. That was a good thing for the animators because it made their job easy. They were also aware that it could make the fifth season seem a lot more different than the first four and people will then alienate the two. Um, so what they did is that they tried to match the old style as much as possible so you actually think that someone actually stood up and painted in with a brush the backgrounds and so forth and it works tremendously the story is not what i would have expected the it took a direction i did not see coming but i appreciate it and not just the fact that jack has you know spent this 50 years and has given up hope on ever defeating a coup and has some inner turmoil some pretty dark demons are running around in his mind but also some characters that gets thrown into the mix i first th thought that oh it's not gonna work we we only care about jack and we don't want these new people who is only been introduced in the fifth season what about these people from the former seasons and some of them are coming back <laughs> older of course but they actually work enormously well because on, on sidelines you have or parallels you have the new characters and their character arc and where they come from and their worldview and you have Jack and his character development and they go by side by side but they're not identical and it makes an interesting dynamic because then you can compare the two and actually get a good glimpse of how far Jack has actually fallen. And it's tearing him up from the inside. And I don't know. I'm, I'm just getting a feeling that I'm just standing here talking about this show with a big freaking smile on my face. But I can't, I can't help it. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Um, well, but, but what you get is a very well told story with 
extremely good pace. They are still using show, don't tell more than anything uh, as much as they did in the past. The environments looks gorgeous. The acting is perfect. The whole team just brought their A game because they want to finish this show with the end it deserves. Not what the fan deserves, bear in mind, but what the show deserves. What Jack deserves. So you get these 10 episodes and they have... It's, it's, the funny thing is the, the first five or six episodes are actually extremely slow. They do do the world building great. You know, what has happened in the past 50 years? What state is Jack in? What state is Aku in? <laughs> Aku is not in a good state either. And, and so forth. And all the turmoil and opposition that gets thrown into Jack's face. There are some of that in the first couple of episodes, but it's actually slowing enormously down. The reason is, however, because the show needs to focus on Jack's inner turmoil, his inner fight between him who wants to finish the job and the realist, the pessimist who has realized there's nothing left to fight for. Aku has won and he has won the last 50 years. You just need to prepare yourself that there is a little bit slow burn there in the middle. But it's in the last couple of episodes, it's it, it takes off. Holy fuck boss does it take off. And yeah, I, I may as well tell, I'll talk about the end. And don't worry, I won't spoil anything. You need to see this shit. The second last episode ends with the most epic cliffhanger ever. I almost shit breaks. I just sat there and go, holy Shit. Fuck. <laughs> it's, it's, I would probably say it's the, yeah, I would probably say it's the best cliffhanger I've ever seen. If you think, can think of any better cliffhanger, then of course comment below and I will read them. Then you get to the final episode and I will actually jump on the bandwagon with a lot of other fans who says that the episodes were too short. A lot of it felt rush, and I can see that. But in the manner of those 20, 22 minutes of that episode, they managed to do a whole fuck ton. But yeah, there's some battles that are going on that I would have loved to be spread more out and be more detailed. Some characters are given more screen time, and the final fights maybe have something more leading up to it instead of just what's happened there and then some say that after the final fight there's something happening to one of the characters that they don't know why that needed to be there and why jack just couldn't have had overall a happy ending however the last scene in the show i think explains it perfectly and it is i don't can i can i speak say it okay go through this time uh if you don't want the last two minutes spoiled because i need to talk about it. so go to that it's, it's right here you can click on it it's your youtube but you can jump to it uh, and i will also leave one in the description just just for you uh but for the rest of us when jack's all sad that's the thing that happened before and he rides into this huge field with the grand tree and he sits down and he's all <laughs> melancholic or depressed or what you will whatever you will call it which, which is understandable everything considering he then sees this ladybug landing on his finger and he watches it for me personally they, they don't explain anything about it. for me personally it not only reminds him of how he used to view life Back in the old show, he will be the one when the la ladybug landed on him. He will look in it. He will not study it, but try, kind of trying to f to figure out where it's going, where it's coming from, and then gently just let it fly away, because he's in tune with the nature or something. And it kind of reminds him of that. But not only does it remind him of his his old past. To me, it also. I think reminds him of life goes on. Given all the shit that has happened to him, all the ups and especially downs, everything that has opposed him, kicked him in the mud and just buried him beneath bodies upon dead 
bodies of innocent people he could not save. In the end, he actually managed to create a bright future for whoever is left. And I think that is actually a fitting end for Samurai Jack. Because when you think about it, that was his journey. His journey was to find a coup, try and defeat him and end the suffering and create a better world. And he, a lot of the times, didn't care about himself. Here in the fifth season, he actually managed to try and want something besides just his mission. He, he, he wants something else. But... Even though he lost this, he still managed to give others, you know, a new life, a new hope. I, I, th I thought it fitted the series perfectly. Okay, welcome back. I'm, I'm finished talking about spoilers. So, summing up this final season, it was everything I hoped it to be. And even though it was not what I thought it was gonna be, I loved everything about it. Even when I saw the trailer, I thought, oh, it's gonna go this direction. And then they throw in a curveball and so no it's gonna go in this direction and then the end happened and i actually thought i thought the end was not going to happen as it did and by that i don't mean this this, this spider talk i did before but it's the final fight i didn't thought it was going to happen at can i say place where it's going on i actually thought they were gonna go with another direction given the depressing tone of the series uh, that's all i can say but yeah it, it, it takes you on a, a roller coaster ride uh, all the performance was excellent there was a few roles coming back and it was awesome the scotchman is back and he is as hilarious and as we used to remember him and he has a epic send-off holy shit i have never seen someone shit talk that greatly the scenery was perfect, the pacing was excellent, and everything just worked. There are some gripes here and there, especially up and downs, and then the last chunk of it, I believe. And also, I don't think they explored enough of the dark side of Jack, but then again, I think they really wanted to still show him as this pure good being that has been corrupted, not by a coup, but all the things that happened to him. But yeah, it's, it's the minor. But yeah, I can't keep uh, postponing this. Samurai Jack Season 5. And also, the whole series in total is an epic masterpiece. So, Samurai Jack. Season 1 to 4 or Season 5, have you seen it? What do you think about it? Comment below and let me read your thoughts. And as always, until I see you in the next video, remember to stay awesome. Bye! Watch out! Watch out!